Well, welcome back to What's Up with Prophecy Today. Today's study will be on God's Tabernacle. And this is a multi-part series, and this is the first of, of several videos that we'll be having on the Tabernacle of God. Now, this is going to be very interesting because you're going to find out some of the things that go on in the Tabernacle relate to end-time prophecy. So as we go through these, I'll point this out to you, and I think when you get to the end, you'll be really amazed at how much that goes on in the tabernacle, or in the temple, uh, that's outlined in, in the, the Old Testament, is, is applicable to end-time prophecy. Well, in some of my old, uh, other prophecy videos, I have referred to the event of the censor being cast down to the earth that signals the start of the 1335 days of the Great Tribulation. And this censor being cast down just precedes the start of that. It begins right here at the just before the 1335 days start. So I've never really gone through and given you a good uh, understanding of the censor and how important it is. So this will be the first video of several where I go into the details of the sanctuary and the various things that go on there. And I'll point out the censor being cast down, how that applies, and also some other things that will be very interesting, I, I believe. So how do we get to the using the, the censor in end time prophecy? Well, it's actually in Revelation 8 verses 1. And you might like to turn in your Bible and open that up and follow along with me. So it says here, when he opened the seventh seal, there was silence in heaven for about half an hour. And I saw the seven angels who stand before God, and to them were given seven trumpets. Then another angel, having a golden censer, came and stood at the altar. He was given, this is the angel, the angel was given much incense that he should offer with the prayers of all the saints upon the golden altar which was before the throne. Well, this continues on. Revelation 8, 4. And the smoke from the incense with the prayers of the saints ascended before God from the angel's hand. Now here is the key part. Then the angel took the censer, filled it with fire from the altar, and threw it to the earth, and there were noises, thunderings, lightnings, and an earthquake. So this is where I get the idea that the censer is uh, a key element in understanding end-time prophecy. So this today, like I said, we're just going to be looking at the four different temples, a little overview of those. And in our next video, we'll get into this model here. This is a little plastic model, and it uh, illustrates the various aspects of the uh, desert uh, temple, the desert tabernacle. So we'll be using that. So in order to show you why I feel this is so important, this is why we're going to be going through uh, all the uh, various ri rituals that go on uh, in the tabernacle. Well, the Bible says that God's ways are in the sanctuary. That's in Psalm 77, verses 13. Well, what are God's ways? We will find out this is how God is going to save mankind. His uh, the, the various aspects of the, the, the sacrifices and the, the blood offerings and the Day of Atonement these various things are going to, going to illustrate how God's ways are to save mankind. So as we go through this, we'll have to keep that in mind. Well, there are four different temples referred to in the Bible. The first three are in the Old Testament, and the last one is in the New Testament. So the first one is the tabernacle in the desert. The next one is Solomon's temple. Then the third one is Zerubbabel's temple, and lastly is Herod's temple. So I'm going to give you a little brief overview of all of these 
today, a desert tabernacle. How was it designed? Where did the design come from? Did Moses just dream this up? Or, or, some, or did he get it somewhere else? Well, God really ordered that temple to be built. And he actually gave Moses a work order to, for this temple. The work order details what the temple should be made of and how it should be put together and how the services should be conducted. So this is the uh, part of the work order. You can open your Bible here again and follow along if you'd like. This is in Exodus 25 verses 1 to 9. So this is Jesus talking to Moses. It says, The Lord Jesus said to Moses, Tell the people of Israel to bring to me their sacred offerings, accept the contributions from all whose hearts are moved to offer them. Here is a list of sacred offerings that you may accept from them. First one is gold, silver, and bronze. These were the metals that were used in the various construction of the tabernacle. Blue, purple, and uh, scarlet thread. Fine linen and goat hair for cloth. Uh, tanned ram skins and fine goat skin leather. Arcadia wood. Olive oil for lamps. Spices for the anointing oil and for fragrant incense. Uh, onyx stones and other gemstones to be set into the priest uh, chest piece. And here is the last part that's really good. Have the people of Israel build me a holy sanctuary so that I can live among them. So God actually lived among the Israelites and his presence was made known to them. You must build this tabernacle and its furnishings exactly according to the pattern I will show you. So God gave a detailed pattern to Moses, not just this list of materials here, but how to build it and how to construct it. And that's what Moses went ahead and did. Now, did you know that the earthly tabernacle, this, this little example here, this is a little model, plastic model, of course. That, but did you know that this plastic model uh, is modeled after the heavenly sanctuary? Now, we have to be careful because we can't 100% model everything that goes on in the heavenly sanctuary, but this will give us the essence of how God planned to save mankind through Jesus' sacrifice. Well, have you ever had a little playhouse for your children when they were younger? So this is a fun thing for kids to play with, especially... Uh, when they're in a younger age. So this little playhouse has different floors. It has furniture in it. It has various clothing or curtains and uh, various things in the playhouse. But is that playhouse exactly like the real house? Well, it's really not. The real house will have a lot more detail and a lot more things in it than the playhouse. But the playhouse gives you a good representation, a good idea of what the real house would be like. Well, that's the same here with God. He gave us the earthly sanctuary, and I'm calling it a teaching sanctuary. So God uses the, the earthly sanctuary to teach us things about the heavenly sanctuary. So the earthly sanctuary was a, a teaching example of what goes on in the real uh, heavenly sanctuary. So just as a playhouse is not 100% identical to the real house, the earthly teaching sanctuary is not 100% like the heavenly sanctuary and its services. Now kind of keep this in mind as we go along. This is a, an important concept to remember. Well, this is what the uh, artist's rendition here of what the tabernacle in the desert looked like. And, it, and it's this little representation down here we will go through this in detail, and uh, I think you'll enjoy that. I'm going to keep it simple so we can figure out what all this is and try to remember it. So we will, we'll be going through that here in our next uh, video, our next couple of videos, actually. Well, the tabernacle. What was it? 
Well, it was a portable temple. Don't forget, the, the Israelites were out in the desert, 40 years in the desert. So this was a, a tabernacle that you could pack up and move to another location. The Israelites were always moving. So the tabernacle was a portable temple built at God's command by Moses at the base of Mount Sinai. Now, it didn't stay there, of course. It moved, moved around with the, with the Israelites. It was the center of worship and animal sacrifice as they wandered through the desert on their way to the Promised Land. Well, God dwelt among the Israelites in the form of a pillar of cloud by day and a pillar of fire by night, which rested above the tabernacle over the Ark of the Covenant. Now, can you imagine seeing a, I guess you, you could imagine seeing a cloud by day, but can you imagine having a pillar of fire over the top of the tabernacle? Man, that would just send chills up my spine just to see that. This was an amazing revelation of God's presence with them. Well, the Israelites erected the tabernacle at the center of their camp. And the twelve tribes of, of, of Israelites camped in tents around the tabernacle. So visualize a big square here. On each side of the square were three of the tribes. So three, six, nine, twelve. So the twelve tribes camped around the, uh, the tabernacle. So this was the center of their attention. And uh, they knew everything that was going on in the tabernacle at all times. Well, the next temple after the temple in the desert was Solomon's temple. It replaced the portable temple uh, that the Israelites had when they were out in the desert. So all the Jewish men and were required to travel to the temple in Jerusalem three times a year. So Solomon's temple was twice the size of the desert temple and was la lavishly decorated. The next temple after that was Zerubbabel's temple. So when the Persians conquered Babylon, the king of Persia allowed the Israelites to return to their homeland and rebuild the temple. The first set of returnees was led by Zerubbabel, and he was the one that oversaw the rebuilding of the temple, and that's why it's called Zerubbabel's temple. This temple was less than was less lavish version of Solomon's temple, but it was basically the same size and design, and it's also called the second temple. So the temple was the center of sacrificial worship for the, for the Israelites. They, the Israelites who returned to the Promised Land were mostly Israelites from the tribe of Judah, and so they became known as the Jews. Well, the next temple after that is the temple that, uh, that Jesus uh, worshipped at, and this was called Herod's Temple. Now, Herod's Temple was, uh, he attempted to pacify his Jewish subjects by building a bigger and better temple for them. So the temple building was built in 20 B.C., and was about the same size as Zerubbabel's temple. That's the actual building part. But the surrounding courtyards were huge. So this entire area became known as the temple. The, uh, the temple was the center for sacrificial worship again, and the faithful Jews continued to travel uh, to it for their appointed feasts and festivals. Now, this is the temple in which Jesus was brought after his birth and where Jesus was found discussing theology with the rabbis when he was 12 years old. And it also is where Jesus taught and where Jesus drove out the money changers. So this was a very famous temple that we have in the New Testament. It's also where the Sanhedrin held court and where Paul was arrested. Now, this temple was destroyed by the Romans in uh, 70 A.D. So, what have we learned today? This was just a quick lesson. So, what have we learned? We've learned that there are actually four different temples. The temple in the desert, 
Solomon's Temple, Zerubbabel's Temple, and Herod's Temple. So there are four temples uh, in the Bible. And God actually gave Moses the design details for the tabernacle in the desert. And in the following videos, we will learn more about the order of service in the temples. So in the next video, we will investigate the tabernacle's construction, all the various walls and linen that was used, and the furniture in various parts of the tabernacle, and more importantly, the services and what they teach about God's salvation plan for his children. So this will be real interesting, and uh, I hope you will be able to uh, stay tuned and watch those. So Linda and I want to thank you for taking time out in your busy day to look at this video. And this is just the foundation. We're trying to build a foundation here of understanding, and then we're going to build upon that. And we're going to show you how the, the uh, sanctuary in the desert and the services there really apply to end time prophecy. So I want to also remind you that you can now watch these prophecy videos for free using apps for Android and Apple phones or tablets. Now, how do you get these apps? It's real easy. You just go to your Apple or Google store and search for Bible Prophecy Revealed and download it. It's free. And once you get it downloaded, you'll never miss another video. Well, we want to thank you for taking the time again. And God bless you.